Let's understand some of the fundamentals of Excel. Specifically, let's try to understand how this grid area is structured. Each of these small rectangles is called a cell. In order to get a closer view of these cells, I'm going to use a zoom control at the bottom right. And this zoom control works just like a magnifying glass. It actually makes you see things bigger, but it does not change any of the content itself. And as you can see here, one of these cells is selected and it's active by default. The selected cell has a slightly thicker black outline border around it. In this case, this is the selected cell. And each cell has a name and this name uniquely identifies each cell in this worksheet. And the name is available in this small box called the name box above the column A. And as you can see here, the name of this cell is A1. The name is based on the column that the cell belongs to and the row it belongs to. And as this cell is selected, you can also see that the column letter A and the row number one are highlighted. That means that this cell belongs to column A and row one. And that's why the name of this cell is A1. Some people also call the name as address. And each of these columns is a vertical collection of cells. The columns are labeled using alphabets and it starts with A, B, C and it goes further to the right. And in order to see more columns towards the right, you can use this horizontal scroll bar at the bottom and you can scroll towards the right. And as you can see here, the labeling of the columns as it becomes Z, then it starts again with A, 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 B, A, C, and it goes to A, Z, and then it starts again with B, A, B, B, and then goes to B, Z, and so on. And the last column is named as XFD, and this is actually column number 16,384. So that's the number of columns that you have in each of your worksheet, and you cannot have or you cannot create more than 16,384 columns. Similarly, the rows are named as well. The rows are named using numbers. And as you can see here, starting from one, two, three, all the way down, you can use the vertical scroll bar to go down to see more rows. And there is a limit to the number of rows as well and that limit is 1,048,576. You cannot create any more rows than 1,048,576. And as we notice that the rows and columns have limits, that automatically means the cells also have a limit. There are more than 17 billion cells available in each worksheet. Yes, there is a limit, but that is a lot of cells. Each cell is a place for us to store data individually. These cells are not connected to each other by default, so you can treat each of these more than 17 billion cells as individual containers where you can store data. Keep in mind that you can have more worksheets in your workbook so each worksheet has a limit of seven, more than 17 billion cells, but you can create more worksheets if you need. This scale makes Excel suitable for a variety of applications in a variety of environments. So we have to remember that when we are working in Excel, we are working with rows and columns and cells. Each cell is at an intersection of a column and a row, and each cell has a unique name that identifies it. So this underlying fundamental structure enables Excel 
to do amazing things. So it's very, very important that we understand this fundamental structure.